wonderful morning once again welcome to another beautiful day this is the day a glorious day the father has made we will rejoice and be glad in it my name is isaiah phillips and you're welcome to the potter's gate online broadcast this is our beyond devotional segment this morning i want to welcome you once again we have been looking into the word of god for the past uh, few days now we've been dealing into uh, excuse me we've been dealing with the concept of how to pray the word of god and we are really broadening this uh, um, resource in terms of helping us to understand some of the things that will allow our prayer to be effective and uh, you know fervent uh, i believe that this uh, material has been helping us to develop our spiritual base that's one of the things that we are uh, uh, um, believing the father for in this community to continue to empower the church the body of christ and particularly those who are ready to journey in this brand new day to that reality of god's divine intention therefore we are going to continue again this morning this morning we're going to be dealing with another segment in this concept that we began i remember sharing with us we we have about 20 concepts uh, uh, that are basically you know highlighted that at least will help us to begin to you know uh, develop an effective you know spiritual life and if you will a prayer life and i remember starting talking about you know the concept of spirituality and we dealt with that and we looked at spirituality from the concept of god's word all right that we cannot develop spirituality without having or, or rather we cannot develop a sound you know spirituality without having the word of god amen as our base as our foundation and i think that as you know really uh, uh, lay some very good you know foundation for us at uh, this morning I want us to look at another point and that's you know uh, uh, the nature of sin we're going to be looking at sin how sin can hinder us you know from from growing from maturing from developing and even from entering into the scope where our prayer amen becomes effective effectual where we can indeed continue to you know advance because if we live our life within that mindset where all right we feel unworthy we feel sinful we feel you know uh, 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 um, you know not understanding how to how to engage in the things of the spirit or we feel discouraged or we, we allow the enemy to continue to use our sin you know sinful nature excuse me our past to to stop us from advancing into the things of the spirit we may not be able to enter into the full scope into the full reality of god's in, intention for our life so it's important that we deal with the concept of sin this morning but before i deal with that i just quickly want to bring this scripture again as a reminder all right to at least to give us that context of what we are dealing with now the scripture says in, in the book of luke chapter 12 verse 31 they say if you seek the kingdom of god first all right it says seek the kingdom of god first it says and this thing shall be added unto you it says do not be afraid little flocks he said for it is the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom so this scripture to us basically lay you know a, a framework of how we need to pray of how we need to engage of how we need to develop our spiritual orientation you know and understanding in terms of amen the things of god the things of the spirit and our father father amen really wants to give us all things in fact the scripture says all things are yours but we know we know that we cannot just look at this scripture on a face value all right and just continue to quote this and believe that all is well yes we can quote the scripture it's important but these are scripture amen that we need to really dig, dig into and allow the spirit of god to e expand it to us in in a way where we're able to connect it with other scriptures or other you know segments of of spiritual truth that can at least begin to allow us to see what the lord is saying because like i said the, the concept of the kingdom is huge this is not something we can just play with or joke with you know giving us the kingdom that's that's a huge responsibility so we've been looking at this you know uh, uh, this concept and i believe that as we continue to you know press into what the kingdom of god is into how the kingdom of god amen function into how amen we have been invited and we have been called amen to walk in that life in that power in that knowledge in that wisdom of the kingdom that we can begin to at least exhibit amen that the potential that god has given to us that we can go out there and begin to you know take dominion and express authority in those areas where the enemy all right has been 
you know, really, you know, are lying to people. There's so many things out there that we need to deal with. But first of all, we need to develop a man, a well furnished, a well informed, a well established spiritual foundation. And this is what I think, amen, the spirit of the Lord has been laying in our hearts for a while. And that's what we've been doing. If you notice many of the th uh, teachings that we've been doing for a while is basically to give us a kind of a, uh, if you will, a spiritual systematic, you know, development. Uh, I, I, I sense that, you know, in, if we're going to go on with God in this brand new day, amen, we must look into the concepts of a discipleship, you know, prophetic discipleship, amen, you know, apostolic discipleship. We must be solidified. We must be established on the present truth. The word of God must be well firmed in our heart. We must be built, amen, on present truth. Our life must be established, amen, on biblical doctrinal principles. So when we pray, we pray effectively. That's why we tag this, amen, praying the word of God, amen. Everything we are talking about is about the word of God. These scriptures that we are using, we can use them to pray, all right? We can take them before the Lord in prayer. But 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 what, what I'm doing is basically to allow us to have an understanding, to understand how the word of God works, how the spirit of God, amen, functions within our life and how we can connect so that when we start praying, our prayer is rich, our prayer is fervent, our prayer, amen, speaks into those areas that we need God, amen, to intervene or that we have been invited, amen, to share of the life, of the goodness, of the grace, amen, and of the experience of, of, of the things of the spirit because indeed that's what prayer is all about, amen. Prayer is not just about communicating. Prayer is also an invitation, amen, for intimacy. Intimacy meaning that we are being shown, we are being revealed, we are being taken into realms and dimensions in the things of God, amen, that we, 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 we are not aware of. So once we begin to understand prayer from this, you know, from this point of view, then you see our, like I say, our orientation start changing. Our belief system start changing. Our concept of engaging life, of engaging situations, circumstances, needs, problems, amen, you know, attacks, changes. We want to come to that elevated realm, amen, in the things of the spirit. But for that to happen, there are certain knowledge, there are certain keys we've got to find. There are certain dimension of spiritual, you know, uh, knowledge and wisdom, amen, that must be well established in our heart. And it's from there that we can go on, that we can press further, that we can begin to, amen, advance into this brand new day. So we're dealing with the concept, amen. Of the, of the of sin nature this morning today or rather the the the, 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 the 15th amen of november we, we're dealing with want to deal with the with the, the with the sin nature all right because as, like i said as we understand amen that the power of sin if we understand the power of sin and know how to deal with that power amen and know how to neutralize that power then then we can begin to step into the full reality <laughs> excuse me that's the first time. <laughs> That's my first word. <laughs> All right. Then we can begin to understand, amen, the life and the authority that God has given to us. Because indeed, sin is sin is a reality. But God has given to us, amen, a power and authority over the sin nature. But if we just take this with levity, if we just take this on a face value, I tell you, the enemy will continue to use sin to hinder, to frustrate, and to cripple our advancement, particularly in the day where the enemy understands that we can accelerate further, we can do better, amen, when we walk in the power of righteousness. Thank you so much, my dear sister, for connecting. The enemy understands that once we touch the reality, the revelation, amen, of righteousness, we can accelerate our walk with God. We can step into that arena that nothing stops us. But he knows that as long as that, you know, a uh, 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 seed, that drop of, of, of sin nature or character, or we are still, you know, holding on to certain things, amen, that God says we should let go of. He knows that as long as those things are in our life, that he, he you know, he defeats us. And that's true. <clears throat> as long as there, there are things in our lives, as, as long as there are excuse me, there are situations or circumstances or even people in our life, amen, that are not supposed to be there. It, it, it distracts us. And that's one of the things that we're dealing with, amen, when we talk about, you know, sin in the place of prayer. All right? Sin can be a, a, a hindrance. And hindrance most time comes through distractions. All right? When, when you leave your heart, because you see, for you to be able to pray effectively, you've got to be able to get rid of every form of distraction. One of the things that I don't like around when I'm praying, amen, is distractions. All right? There are, there are material, elemental distractions, but there are also distractions within us. Thoughts, ideas, all right? You know, images, people, you know, uh, things that, okay, you forgot to you do. You know, uh, things that you're supposed to do. 
issues that you know you've never dealt with those things are distraction and once you are distracted in the place of prayer Forget it. Your prayer cannot be effective. And that's the plan of the enemy. He, he allows us, amen, to live in that context, in that environment where we, we find ourselves getting distracted. So dealing with sin basically is dealing with the distraction in the place of prayer, in the place of effective engagement with the things of the Spirit. So I, 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 I put some things down and I'll quickly want us to just look at them. Then I've got one or two scriptures that I want us to look into this morning. All right. So one of the things that I said is it is not enough to have the knowledge, all right, that that you know that we are saved, all right, that we are you know born again, that we are that you know that we are walking with the Lord or that we are connected with God, that we have a relationship. It's not enough to just have that residual knowledge, all right. But but we have to maintain that knowledge, amen. Through the new life we have in Christ Jesus, it's important that we maintain. And now that the concept of maintenance is very, very challenging to a lot of people because we believe that once I know it, then it's fine. Knowledge itself is good, but knowledge is not enough when it comes to the things of the Spirit. You've got to take what you know and begin to apply them on a day to day, even, or even to the point of, you know, hour to hour, you know, basis. Like I said, the concept of praying and binding your mind to the will of God. I mean, that is something that many people will find difficult doing, but that is one of the most effective way amen of keeping sin out of our life because we need to walk in that consciousness that the knowledge we have or right, that we are not walking in its consciousness is not effective cannot be effective so it's not enough to just say, okay well I've got the knowledge about what God amen has done for me or what God amen will have me do you have the knowledge but you are not a applying that knowledge so we need to maintain amen this knowledge through the reality through the revelation of the new life we have in christ jesus all right it, it's important that we do that in many cases the enemy knows that yes we know certain things but guess what he creates he creates all kinds of issues he creates all kinds of situations and circumstances around us amen to, to to derail to to divert our attention even from that little thing have you noticed that most times when we're when we're in the situation that is die hard when we are in a situation where we need to react most time we react on the negative you know level why because what we know has not become you know part and parcel of our life to the point that you know those our reaction becomes a muscle um, um, a muscle memory of what we already know in christ jesus and until amen what we know in the lord becomes a muscle memory in other words you hit the theme because you know that that is the right path amen you know that this is what you need to say all right that you don't find yourself under pressure all right you know uh, allowing the old man amen to cop to pop up amen to to say things to say things you're not supposed to say because that's the old nature amen when you find yourself under pressure you find yourself going back to the default of your fallen human adamic nature and that's where we realize oh what have i just done yes you see because what you know has not become part of your life has not become part and parcel of how you live life and that's where the work is or else sin will continue to seek advantage amen we must be able to you know to 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 overcome to overpower we must be able to live our life amen from that ascended understanding amen of who we are in christ jesus and that we can do amen when we live in that constancy amen of moving of walking amen of connecting of fellowshipping with with the lord amen you can fellowship with the lord amen on on you know at, at any point amen at any situation you wherever you find yourself you can be in the toilet you can be you know walking in your in you know on your decks you can be anywhere you can be on your computer and you're communing with god that constant you know connection with the with the with the lord and with the things of the spirit it's so vital all right yesterday we read a scripture regarding cain the lord said all right cain why why is your heart so 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 why are you so downcast why is your face you know so you know you know you're looking so you know so sad you know sin see if you if you if you do what is right all right you will be accepted but if you do what is wrong be careful he said because sin lies at your door he's seeking an entrance he said don't allow him you need to master that thing if you don't master it the lord said he's going to master you and guess what cain allows sin to master him he lured his brother into the field and killed him why because he had i mean he heard the voice of god and that's the point that i'm making this morning we can we can have a knowledge about the things of god we can know amen what god expects of us we can read it we might even have written about it amen but that does not mean that that doesn't translate amen to empowerment 
that when situation comes, you find yourself doing the right thing. No, you have to live in that order of life where you have developed what I call an habitual, an habitual righteousness, an habitual practice of truth. You've got to get to that point in our, in our walk with God. So it's not enough to have knowledge. We can have all the knowledge of what you know great men of God have said about you know about you know whatever all right we can even have all the knowledge we can have all the knowledge of what the scripture says but if the knowledge has not been has not been you know uh, distilled all right you know you know if you if that knowledge has not been translated if that knowledge has not been transferred into what becomes an energy to us you see, you see if that thing has not become an energy become part and parcel of your life you find yourself when you are you know in a situation where you need to respond, you find yourself responding based on your old nature. And that's why many people say, but, 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 no, there's no but. The thing is, we have not really worked on ourselves in those areas that we're supposed to master. All right? So, so it's important that we have knowledge, but we must go beyond knowledge. Because sin, you don't overcome sin by knowledge. You overcome sin, amen, through righteousness. Righteousness, amen. The Bible says righteousness amen, exalts a nation. Righteousness is what gives us the ability and the capacity to be an overcomer. Righteousness is having a standing before the Lord. Righteousness, amen, is standing on that point, on that knowledge, on that reality, on that firm truth that you know. That's righteousness that you want to do what is right. You see, righteousness is connected. It's an active word. It's not passive. Righteousness is an active word. You're standing before the Lord. Amen. This is not an it's, it's not a passive thing when you're righteous it means that there are principles that you abide by that's righteousness there are principles that you abide by there are principles that you walk with and this principle amen are informed through the word of god this principle these values amen when you talk about righteousness you're talking about a value system you're talking about principle righteousness is not about oh i'll worship you lord lord i give you glory ah it's not all the the act righteousness amen it's about values it's about principle it's about standard amen it's about understanding it's about wisdom it's about you engaging things from a from a from a from a lifestyle from a position of christ you are in christ jesus a righteous man is one who stands in christ a righteous person is one who stands in christ so you stand by what you believe and they said, no, this is, this is what everybody is saying. You say, sorry, I don't follow what everybody says. I follow what the scripture says. That is just what the scripture says, and that's what I'm standing by. That's righteousness. You see, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel, all of them, they had to stand in righteousness, amen, in, 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 in a society, in a culture, amen, that contradicts the values of God. All right, that's righteousness. Righteousness is not when somebody, you know, you know I'm mocking God, or, you know, people are doing things that are, you know, crazy around you. And you keep mob, you just keep quiet and you take your face away. No, righteousness means that you turn and say, but that's not right. That's not your, in fact, you're misquoting God. In fact, you're, you, you know, you're standing against the standard of God. All right. And, and you don't care what people think. You tell them that's the, I mean, obviously politely and you continue to do your thing. And that's me. Wherever I find myself that people contradict things, the, the, the things of God, or I see injustice, or I, I, I don't care whoever knows, whoever sees it. I stand my ground. To be righteous, you must have, amen, you know, this ability to stand for what is right, for what is true. You've got to be able to do that. And, and it starts from you. Amen. You, you can't point fingers to other people if you cannot point the same finger to yourself. All right. Righteousness starts with how you look at your own life, how you evaluate yourself with regards to the things of the spirit. Amen. That is righteousness. It's a right standing. All right? It's a right standing. It's not. It's not dramatization. No, it's. It's not. It's not a make believe. All right. If you're standing in righteousness, amen. You. You. You overcome sin. It doesn't mean that you're not going to face, you know, opposition or face even the consequence of your right standing. Sometimes, yeah, we pay the price. But guess what? That's part of, amen, the crown that we receive, the crown of glory that we're going to receive from the, from the law, amen, for every challenge, amen, we, we face based on our standing, amen, based on our position for truth. Guess what? There is a glory that is awaiting us. And that's what we forget. You know, sometimes when I look at people who, you know, they're preaching on the street and people challenge them and they abuse them and all that and i said these are people who are going to be receiving glory because bible says you know if people persecute you for my sake it says rejoice 
rejoice because there's a glory waiting for you we've got to understand this thing so to be to be quiet or to you know keep our you know our christianity in some secret you know private thing now, that's not righteousness i don't know why i'm emphasizing on that but we, we've got to put that into context because it's important that we and and we cannot have righteousness we cannot have righteousness if sin you see sin will cripple us sin will make us feel weak sin will make us look you know inadequate you feel inadequate that's the power of sin sin always stop us when it comes to the things of the spirit sin will always cripple sin will tell us we cannot we don't have what it takes but when it comes to the things of the flesh the things of the world our ah, sin will empower us yes our voice will become the loudest because that's the sin nature sin empowers the fallen nature righteousness amen righteousness reduce that nature and exalt christ in our life jesus said if i be lifted up i would draw the more we lift christ up in our life in our environment the more we exalt christ amen the more he lift us up is the more he draw us up amen and the more we live above amen the weakness and the vagaries of men but we've got to love it. We want. We must want to live in this dimension of a life. All right. Many of us, we 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 romance the things of the spirit. We like it, but we we really don't love it to the point where we go sell every other thing to buy that piece of truth. And that's the cost. There's a cost to this journey. There's a cost to it. It's not. Oh well. Yes. You know. People like the idea of being a Christian. We, we like the idea. We like the idea of you know serving God and pleasing God. But it's not about an idea. The people who preserve Amen the truth we have today pay a price. Some of them with their life they paid the ultimate price. Some of them the Bible says in the book of Hebrews we are caught asunder. We were, we were jailed. All right. I mean they were wandering from caves to caves. The Bible says the, this this world Amen have nothing to offer to them. And they also, amen, they were crucified to the world. We've got to change the values of how we define our work with God. And if we, if we change that value system, our prayer life changes. That's the point that I'm making. Our prayer life changes. Many times you need to listen to your own prayer. I mean, I used to listen to my prayer. In fact, I remember I used to record myself praying. And I pray, I, I play back my recording, my prayer recording. I play it back to myself, you know. And then I score myself. Because see, when you're praying by the Spirit, particularly I do that when I know that, yes, now I'm praying by the Spirit. And my Lord, there have been times in my life where I feel weak, tired. I couldn't just, you know, continue prayer. You know what I do? I just start replaying my prayer. I, I mean, I've got, I've got you, know, you know, some good recordings that I've done about my own prayer life. I remember when my son was born, or, you know, suffering all kinds of, you know, uh, uh, challenges. I mean, I remember praying. I just pray for him. And sometimes when I'm in the spirit, I just start recording my prayer. Wow, powerful prophetic declaration. Sometimes you don't even know the things you've said in, your, in the place of your prayer. It's important that sometimes you record yourself praying. All right? and, and I'm like, Lord... Uh, and like I said, sometimes I feel weak and tired. Or you, I just feel like, okay, refreshing myself. Then I just play one of my, you know, my prayers. Wow. Suddenly I find myself praying again. Because that's what, you know, a true prayer life does. When, when you pray by the Spirit, that thing, is a, that thing releases life. It releases life. And when you connect to life, it's a spark. You come back to life. Anything that is dead, amen, it's, it's a dead battery. The water is, is dying. That thing is dying. You just need to charge that battery with another battery that is alive. And then you see the spark come back to life. That's what I'm talking about. So, so it's important that we understand this, or you know, all this di dimension of, 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 you know, of life that God has given to us. Sin is always looking, amen, for an opportunity to crawl and cripple back, you know, creep into our life again. Sin is sin will cripple us. Sin will frustrate, amen. The the, the inflow. Sin wants to cut, you know, the, the, the our, our relationship with God. Why am I talking about sin? For this same reason. Because sin is not just about, oh, well, uh, well it's, it's not just about an act. Sin amen, is it's not just about a rebellion or right, against God. S the purpose of sin is to cut, is to, sh is to break your relationship. It, it, the, the law says, in, let's, let's, let's look at the scripture in Isaiah chapter 59. Thank you, Father. 
Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 says, Surely the arm of the Lord is not shut to save, nor his ears dull to hear. <clears throat> it says, but your sin, <clears throat> excuse me, your sins or your iniquity have, 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 have built a wall or barrier between you and your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you. You see the point that I'm making this morning. Your, your sin, your, your iniquities have built a barrier, a wall between you and God. And sin have hidden. Just look at that. Sin has hidden the face of God. So it's not God hiding his face. It's not God. I, that's the point. That's why I'm highlighting this point. Because the thing is, we want to see the face of God. We want to behold His glory. We want to live a life, amen, where we have this, you know, face-to-face -face encounter with Him. But guess what? Sin can hinder. Sin can block. Sin can frustrate. All that. A, a lot of people can put so much energy into, you know, into a spiritual act. But then they have not dealt with the issues of sin in their life. You know, one of the things that I do when I come here, every time I make sure that I talk to God before I come here, I hope, Lord, there's nothing in my heart, in my life that could hinder me, that could stop me. So I present myself to the Lord. I make sure my heart, my body, my soul is presented to him. I bind myself to him because I don't want anything to stop the flow. <clears throat> Excuse me. To stop my flow. To stop. You see, that's what sin does. It cuts the flow. It pollutes the, the water. It hinders the flow. And we have to have that understanding that sin, amen, can block us from seeing the face. The glory is in the face. Sin can block us from, amen, from beholding the face. It says your iniquity have built a barrier. We want to pull down every barrier. We want to shatter. We want to break down every wall. Amen. We want to bring down every limitation, whatever it is that is stopping, that is blocking the flow, our life from connecting to the things of the spirit. You know, people get get frustrated. They get frustrated. Why are they getting frustrated? Amen. It's not God. Yesterday we talked about it. Cain was getting frustrated. Cain, amen, was getting angry. Cain, amen, became resentful for his own problem, for his own sin. He took it up on his brother. Most time we need to look into our own self. If you feel angry, you're feeling, you know, rejected, you're feeling dejected, you're feeling discouraged. Amen. Most time it's not the people. Most time it's us. We just need to look inward. All right? Because if you maintain a flow with the Lord, I tell you, it is very difficult for sin to gain entrance into our life. If we live our life in accordance to God's desire, if we live in to please God in everything we do, I tell you, it's going to be very challenging for the enemy, for sin to creep into our life. But the reality is sin does creep into our life because there are still things all right, that we love. The Bible talks about Achan. I think it's in Joshua chapter 7. In Joshua chapter seven, the Bible mentioned about mentioned to us about this young this, this guy called Achan, who loved. The Bible says he loved the Babylonian garment. All right, and the, the Lord already told them, no, none of the Israelites must touch the accursed things. All right, they must not touch the accursed things. They must keep it. They must, he said, when I saw the Babylonian garment, he admired it. He said, I saw it. I loved it. I coveted it. I took it. I went to hide it under my tent. That act brought you know, not just a destruction to his own life and family, but to the entire clan. Sometimes, all right, we still admire the things that God says don't admire. Don't, don't love those things. Love not the world. You see, and as long as we have a hidden love, a hidden, you know, ad admiration for the things of this world, as long as we are admiring certain things that God hates, ah, we've given sin room. Because that's all sin needs. Because what is sin? Sin is rebellion. Sin is disobedient. Amen. Sin, sin is that which the enemy put it, put it excuse me, placed around us uh, you know, as a bait. He came to, to Eve and said, did, did, did God say you must not actually eat of this fruit? <laughs> You don't argue. You don't. You see what the world system are doing today? They're trying to argue around what God wants or what God doesn't want. We're trying to argue our way out. We're trying to, you know, even today, not even the world, the church is doing it. 
We've reduced the standard of God. No wonder the power of God, amen, you know, it's, it's no longer in our, in our, in our, in our midst. No, long, no one that the, the power, the glory, the authority of, of, you know, of, of, of God seem to be missing. Why? Because we have also played and we've reduced the things of God to our own human level. Many of us are so zealous, all right, to the point that we can reduce, amen, the standard of God just to allow anything in, just to allow anybody. Now we want to mix the whole thing, all right? We can mix God with other things. We, it doesn't work that way. We cannot mix the things of God. You cannot mix this wine. You mix the wine, you pollute it. You mix the wine, you pollute it. God and the world don't work together. <laughs> the Lord said, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. We cannot want to you know, serve God, but then we want to use our own mind. We want to use our carnal mind. We want to please God, but we also want to please the world. They say you cannot, you cannot serve two masters. You have to choose one. So every day, you know, I, I, I pray, Father, help me to live my life in accordance to your will, in accordance to your standard, in accordance to your desire, in accordance to your, you know, your, your, your preference. Uh, his preference must be our desire. He says, surely the hand of the Lord is not shut. You know, we pray, God, move. God is not moving. Well, you might think maybe God's hand is short. No, his hand is not short. The Bible says, not is his, his, his ear too dull to hear. He hears. He's listening. So God's hand is not short. His ears are not dull to hear. He's hearing. And his hands can say, but so why is he not responding? Why are we praying and it's like our prayer are not being answered? It says, because there is something called iniquity that have built a wall. It's a sin as hidden the face of God from us so that he will not hear us. This, these are things we've got to look into. Now, we've got to understand this, that the Father has called us to be amen, a, a, a chosen people, a special people. One of the things that defines amen, the environment of God in our life is holiness, is righteousness. A life of purity, a life of holiness is, 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 is something we've got to love, we've got to embrace. Why? Because it enhances our communion, our relationship, our co community, you know, our interaction with the things of the Spirit. In, in, in 1 Peter chapter 2, or verse 8 and 9, he says, he says but we are, we are supposed to be, you know, uh, uh, in fact, let me just take it from verse 9. From, from, from verse nine. It says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people, a people of God, or a people God have chosen, amen, for his own possession to, pro to proclaim, amen, the virtue of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. These are scriptures that must become part and parcel of our life. We are amen, a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy, not just a nation, but a holy nation. That, that is the qualification. We are supposed to be holy. Like I always say, holiness means to be whole, to have wholeness. It means, amen, to be complete in spirit, soul, and body. To live our life, amen, in honor, in reverence to God, amen. To live our life, amen, in, in, in pleasing Him in everything. In everything. Your own preference, amen, has been swallowed up by His preference. You now live your life within, amen, the, the, the ambience of His goodness. You now live your life, amen, within the authority of his will. His kingdom has come to rest, to stay. Amen. You, you, you've not given him 99.9. .9. Well, you're keeping one for yourself. You give him all. I said it yesterday. Cain gave of his strength to the Lord. The offering that Cain brought, amen, was from his strength. He gave from, amen, from, from, from the brows of his sweat, from that which he planted. I mean, when you look at that on the face value, what's wrong with that? But God is not looking, looking for you to give of your strength to him. He wants you to give him your strength. Give him your strength. Give him what defines you. Give him all of you. God doesn't just want what you produce by your power, by your ability, so you can boast. 
I could remember back then some people used to boast they are the highest tight payer in the church. Oh, we give this, we give that, we do this, we do that. And that thing used to, you know, just make me feel so sad. You hear this thing, obviously not the church I was pastoring, but the church I came out from. And, you know, people used to know oh, that person. Because once, you know, there's a need in the church, you see them. And that's where I knew that something is wrong with this model. This cannot be the mold that we're supposed to be building with. There's a project in the church. Who can do this? Who can do this? You see them, they raise their hand. They're the first kind of people. And you know the amount. And I'm saying to myself, this is, this is good. But why can't these guys do this thing in secret? Because there are some people in, in the same congregation who are, who, who are in, in need, in dire need. And I'm saying to myself, why, would you, why is this a show? Why must it be a show that you gave? And I made up my mind, if the Lord called me and I'm going to start a ministry, I'm not going to follow that pattern. I'm talking about a pattern that, you know, got so many people. I mean, yeah, there were people who celebrated. Yeah, yes, this person gives. I'm, and guess what? When I came to South Africa, you know, in some of the churches that I, I, I was assisting back then in Johannesburg, I saw the same pattern. That's why I knew this pattern is an American pattern. It's a commerce pattern. It's a capitalist pattern. That pattern, God is crumbling that thing now. If you want to give, the Bible says you should not even let amen, the right hand know what the left, what, excuse me, the left hand should know what the right hand is given. Why must you announce it? P particularly when everybody is there. You see, that, that's, that's something that the enemy will use as an opportunity. You think you're doing something. You, people who are even doing this thing, they may not even know that they're committing sin. Yeah, the Bible says you've already received your reward. You've received your reward. So what are we talking about? We have to live a life that is totally, totally yielded to the values, to the principles, to the standard of God. That's why this, this journey is not for everyone. No, many are called. Just like if there's going to be a, a, recruit, a recruiting of, uh, you know, of, of, of cadets into the military. All right? You recruit many people. You put it on the newspaper. All right? We're looking for people who want to join all right, South African Navy. We're looking for people who want to join the military, you know, and, you know, you know, the the Air Force, you know, you know, wing of, you know, of of the army. We want to train people. So everybody brings the application. <laughs> yes, all right. And you go through the screening. All right. Many people pass the screening. Some people don't pass it. They check your health. They check every aspect of your life. They check how sound you are. They check every area of your life. And then you think, wow, you've, you've passed. No, you just passed the first stage. Guess what? You're going to go through the next stage. Now, you're going to, you're going to, be, you're going to be tested. They will test, amen, your, 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 your mentality. They will test, amen, your, your ability of, you know, of patience. They will test every area of your life. And the test, guess what? Will be, direct, will be directed to make sure that you fail. Because they want to see if indeed you want this thing. You see, today, like I said, I, I mean, I, I, my heart is very sore when I look at the way we have reduced the things of God. It's like we are so hungry for a revival that every jump, every, every shaking that we see, today we call it a revival. But that's not what we see in the word of God. That's not what we see in the word of God. And the Bible says the natural explains the spiritual. So in the military, you want to join because the best, if you if you want to look for the best guys, the best people, amen, in town, the best, the, in terms of, you know, mindset, in terms of skill, in terms of, you know, discipline, leadership, you go look for them in the military. The military have got the best doctors. They've got the best lawyers. They don't go for any kind of people. They, no, no, no. They go for the best. Because they, they put you through rigorous, rigorous, rigorous training. They push you to the point that you say, I give up. You see? You watch. I mean, we, many of us watch these programs. They, they push you. They push you. I, I tell you, go watch some of those military trainings. That's how you know how God trains us. It, it puts you in the midst of fire. Let's see what she's going to do. Let's see what he's going to do. Yes. Why? Because they must make sure that when they are done with you, there is no place, there is no room for the enemy, amen, to corrupt. Yes, 
because because you're going to be defending the nation you're going to be the one defending the nation we don't want you selling the nation we don't want you amen tomorrow waking up and and, and turning against the nation so you go through all kinds of tests all kinds of not today that the military has been politicized many of the people you see somebody in the military you see his, his tummy is like a pregnant woman where where do you come from who, who, who trained you no in the military, you don't see no tummy because it's all flat. Why? Because they are disciplined. It's discipline you, how you eat, what you eat, everything. Why? Because you are there to defend the nation. We don't want laxity. We don't want weakness. We don't want somebody who cannot run. We don't want somebody who will collapse when you're supposed to be chasing. You know, <laughs> I watched, I watched, uh, I don't know if I should call it a, you know, a cartoon, a comedy. You know, so was it two years ago? You know, they show this, you know, uh, South African police trying to chase, you know, some you know, criminals. This guy, this guy was so was so big that I mean, he, he could not run. I mean, so you know how they make fun of these things on social media, and I could I couldn't just stop laughing. I said, I mean, look at somebody who's going to catch a thief. You mean this guy is out of shape? Is out of shape? Unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, that's how many of us are when it comes to the things of the Spirit. We are so out of shape. We are so out of shape that we can't even catch up with the devil. We can't stop him. We can't, we can't, we can't say, no, Satan, you have no place here. All right? We can't put him on the run. And when he starts running, we can't, we can't chase him and stop him. <laughs> because we are just too out of shape. And that's why amen, before God ever begin to open you up into certain dimensions of the things of the kingdom, amen, he puts you, he sends you into a military camp. He sends you, amen, to a person called Isaiah Phillips Akintola. He says, go to that guy, amen. He will train you how to be, amen, <laughs> ready for the things of the kingdom. Yes, that's why many people, when they come into my life, they fail, they run away because they can't stand the heat. They can't stand the test. Yes, and it's not just me. There are several out there, all right? Not, not all these kind of churches you find everybody's just, everybody's jolly jolly. That's not the kingdom. You can do church, but when you talk about kingdom, there's a different order. There's a different pattern. There's a different standard. All right, you will take the test. You fail it, you take it again. Because listen to this, the nation depends on you. When you go out there, you say you're representing the kingdom. We want to see somebody who truly have a clear, prophetic, apostolic, reformation understanding about the things of God. This has nothing to do with people. I have no problem with people, but I have a problem, amen, with your assumption, with your belief system. And that I will continue to deal with until you align with the standard of God. Because when they deploy you, when they send you out there to fly that jet plane, hallelujah, you don't, you don't, you don't panic when you see the enemy. Oh, the enemy is coming. They say, stay there. Face the enemy. You're defending the nation. So check it. The military guys, they've got the best. And when you talk of, in fact, when you begin to talk about that, when you look at the American military, you know, the Marine Corps guys, they are on a different level. They are on a different level. And these are supposed to be a picture for us as the body of Christ. You know, special spiritual commandos that you send into the enemy, enemy territory to go get an information, to get something. You invade the power. You invade the kingdom of darkness and destroy the thing. Look at what the Bible says about the kingdom. The Bible says the kingdom of God amen, is like a yeast that is planted. That is put within the door. That's the principle of the kingdom. Nobody knows but you are there. Hallelujah. You are causing havoc from within. Many of us cannot take the heat. That's why we settle for you know, the Christianity of popularism. We settle for the Christianity amen, of just jolly jolly. And just let's just eat and you know have cake and drink, you know. We just let's eat cake and they just drink some uh, you know uh, uh, you know nice cool drink and let's enjoy ourselves. Hallelujah, praise God. And we and we and we lie to ourselves that we have prayed and we have done something. Come on, we're just joking. We're joking. Because we have not even understood the principles, amen, of spiritual discipline. And this is why I'm dealing with the issues of sin today. Sin, amen, will hinder us because sin is a weight. Sin is a weight in our life. Sin is a weight when it comes to the things of the, of the, you know, the spirit. 
We've got to understand our spiritual identity. All right. We've got to live, amen, within uh, the structure of discipline. Our minds, our thought pattern must be disciplined. Amen. Sin will stop you, amen, from advancing into the things of God. Amen. Sin is a reflection of indiscipline. Sin is a reflection of indiscipline. Yes. They say, go this way. Ah, you begin to see all kinds of challenges on the way. Suddenly, you begin to think of another route. Isn't, isn't there another route? No, no, they say that's the way. You see, that's what sin does. It makes us to look for different routes. We've got to understand the nature of what God is calling us into. I'm not speaking as a, you know, as a church person. I'm speaking from a kingdom perspective. If you are in the kingdom, because what we're dealing with, amen, is, is, is building, amen, empowering, amen, a new order of people who God is investing, calling them out of, you know, churchialism into a life called kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. It's kingdom. This is not church. The thing men call church has died. It's dying. God is bringing out his kingdom. It is those who have the ability, amen, to walk in the life, in the nature of Christ that will inherit the kingdom. We read that scripture. I'm going to read it again. It says, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Are you ready to receive that kingdom? Do you have the kind of training? Do you have the kind of ability, the kind of capacity, the kind of understanding, the kind of tenacity, the kind of doggedness, the kind of ruggedness? Do you have that ability, amen, that never says die, that never gives up? Do you have it? If you don't have it, then you've got to enroll, amen, to get it. Because I tell you, many are called, few are chosen. So this is an arena to qualify the, those that are chosen. This is not for many that are called. Like I told you before, you go enroll. They say, well, we want people that will join the army. We want people that will join the navy. I mean, those the things those guys do, this is, you, you can't come with your civilian mindset. You come with your civilian democratic man, mindset. No, they will kick you away. Sorry, sorry, not here. You see, the moment you enter any military camp, you are no longer a man within a, a jurisdiction that is ruled by politics, that is ruled by politics and that is ruled amen, by democracy. No, any military base you enter, you have left South Africa, you've entered into a different zone. It's called military zone. All right. If you sin, they will judge, they will court martial you. They won't take you to their, you know, civilian, you know, uh, court. No, they've got their own court. They've got their own way of dealing with you. That's how it is even in the kingdom. All right? The way God would deal with somebody on the outer court is not the way he's going to deal with somebody in the holy court. It's not the way he's going to deal with somebody who, has, who is ascending the things of the spirit. That's why Moses messed up. God says, sorry, I'm not even going to listen to you. You're not going to enter the land. You've got to understand. We've got to understand the ways of God and the things of the spirit. So, so if we are not ready for this, for this advancement, for this work, just, just stay where you are and, and continue to enjoy you know, your cake and do your own thing there on that outer court. He said, leave the outer court. It is given to the Gentiles. Leave it. But they are Gentiles, but they are worshipping God. Yes, yeah, leave it. It's for, the, it's, for, it's for the Gentiles. The outer court is for the Gentiles. And he, guess what? He has priests. God has priests that will minister to those people in the outer court. He said, but those priests will never would never enter into a dimension of the holy place. That's why God separated the Zadok order, amen, from the rest of the priest. Yes, because those priests compromise. God said, no, I'm not going to strip them of their priesthood, but we will leave them at the outer court. We will leave them there. So there are people, there are ministers on the outer court, all right? You would be doing ministry, oh, hallelujah, praise God, yes. But it's outer court ministry. But God will never use those people when it comes to, amen, things of the kingdom. Because they don't understand the language of the kingdom. They don't understand the ways of the kingdom. They don't understand the values of the kingdom. They don't understand the culture of the kingdom. They don't understand the discipline of the kingdom. They don't understand the leadership of the kingdom. When you introduce leadership kingdom to those people, they say, ah, this guy is too tough. He's too hard. This guy thinks, he stinks because they are thinking democratic. In the kingdom, we don't think democratic. In the kingdom, we are not civilians. No man, hallelujah, that is called into this order, amen, engage himself with a civilian affair. That's a scripture I just quote. If you're called into this thing, amen, you don't engage yourself in civilian affairs. So we've got to understand that in this last day, God is looking for people that will pray, that will stand in the gap. But our prayer must be informed by kingdom values, by kingdom culture, by kingdom pattern of existence, by kingdom template, by kingdom foundation. 
You see, in this order, amen, Christ is our cornerstone. The apostle and the prophetic, amen, is our foundation. It is not the idea of men. It is not the board. No, we've got to understand what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. So let's continue. Amen. It says, but you are a chosen, a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. God wants to possess us so we can possess the nations. It says to proclaim the virtues of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. This is powerful. This is powerful. So as we understand this, it allows us to begin to see the Father's intention. Let me read another scripture as we deal with the issues of sin. That's what we're dealing with. Yesterday we dealt with the concept of spirituality. Today I'm dealing with sin. All right? All right? Tomorrow we're going to, hopefully we deal with something else. All right? But, but all this will help us to begin to have what I call a well-informed spiritual you know, orientation in terms of engaging amen, the kingdom of God via prayer. This is what we're look, looking at. I want our prayer life, amen, to be robust, to be mature. So when you pray, you're praying with understanding. You're praying with confidence. Your confidence is not based on flesh. Your confidence is not based on your own wisdom or knowledge. No, your confidence is based on, amen, your alignment to the will of God. For this is the confidence we have that when we pray in accordance to his will, he hears us. There's a confidence we must develop. But that confidence, amen, must be well informed, amen, by the reality, by the ascended life of Christ. Not by our own idea, not by our own feelings, you know. Many of us, like I always say, our feelings still fails us. Because today we feel okay, tomorrow we don't feel okay. We've got to leave that realm. We've got to come to the feelings of the Father. Don't you understand that the Father himself has feeling? The desire of God, amen, is for the nations to be saved. That's the feeling of God. God has a feeling for the nation. The Bible says creation is waiting, groaning and crying. God wants to see this thing, amen, come to an end. He wants to come and harvest the earth. The harvesters, amen, the, 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 the owner of the, of the vineyard wants to come and harvest. But guess what? The people that have been placed there are still sleeping. You've got to wake up. It's time to wake up. All right, let's look at Leviticus 20. Thank you, Father. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 26 says, you are to be holy because I am holy. He said, you are to be holy because I, the Lord, amen, I'm holy. I have set you apart from other nations that you should be mine. That's Leviticus 20, 26. You are designed, defined, called to be holy because I, the Lord, am holy. And like I said, we have got to change our understanding of holiness. Holy, holiness is not, it's not just about amen, not committing a, a sin. No, holiness means that you have been transformed, reformed, hallelujah. You have been made whole. Every aspect of your being, your life, your thoughts, amen, your, your, your desire, your passion, your, your feelings, your intellect, every area of your faculty has come into oneness. It's called wholeness. That's, you see, that's holiness. You see, when it's scattered, it's not holy. But when it's like this, it's a feast, it's holy. You bring everything together, amen, and all of you is, is honoring, is speaking to God, is glory. There is no place the enemy can, can sneak in into your life. Every aspect of you has been blocked, amen. Every leakage, amen, has been blocked, amen. Some of us are holy in one aspect, but our soul is still leaking, amen. We're holy in other area, but, you know, our thought pattern is still leaking. We still allow the enemy to come and lie to us and say all kinds of things and, you know, give us all kinds of, uh, um, uh, you know, doubts and, you know, or we see things and we can't see them properly and, 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 and we jump into wrong conclusions and we, 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 we have this wrong understanding and interpretation of the scripture. You see, every aspect of our life must be speaking into that divine uh, 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 synchronization, if you will, of Christ. Holiness is that Christ becomes center of your life, of your world. That's holiness. Holiness is not that, oh, I, I used to lie, I don't lie again. But you, you don't lie again, but you're proud. <laughs> you see? But, but you still live your life amen, condemning others in one particular form. You, you, you still have all kinds of things. So, so 
You, you, you may say, oh, well, but I don't lie again because you've been able to master that. But there are other areas the enemy is mastering your life. Holiness is that every aspect of your life amen, has been brought under the government of God, under the leadership of God, under the authority of the kingdom of God. You no longer live for yourself. You no longer live for yourself. And you're not doing the things of God, amen, just to get some, you know, a, a popularity or to be known or to find some cheap, you know, a, a identity for yourself. No, that you serve God because, amen, he is God, he's Lord. You have rendered your life to him and he's in charge of everything that you do. You're not insecure. You're not dysfunctional. You're not confused. You have come into a day. This is, this is what we teach. This is Kingdom 101. This is kingdom 101. You come into that dimension of holiness. So your thought honors God. Your imagination is honoring God. Your desire is honoring God. All the high things that have exalted themselves in your life has been brought low. Christ rules and reigns in every area of your life regardless of how you wake up and feel. You proclaim and declare, Jesus reigns in me. You no longer live your life by, you know, your feeling, your, you know, your emotions, your, your passion. All of this has been swallowed up in Christ. Christ has become all in all in you. Your motivations, your aspirations, your passion, your desire, your longing, hallelujah, for, the, for God, for the things of God, amen, and for, for your family, your community, amen, has become Christ, that Christ may be glorified, that Christ may be exalted, that Christ may advance. Then they begin to deposit kingdom things into you. That's holiness. See, see, God shows us, God reveals to us what holiness means. You see, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three entity perfected in one being. That's holiness. See, they're complete. There's no struggle. The soul is not struggling with the spirit. The spirit is not struggling with the body. Everything is come into divine synchronization, divine order, divine, divine leadership, divine submission, divine government, divine administration. It's called holiness. So when next you're defining holiness, know how to define it. Amen. Let's not define holiness from a, a lower religious perspective. It's not, it's not how you dress. As much as how you dress matters, because you can't say you're holy, but half of your body, amen, is, is, is naked and, and, and you're causing someone else, amen, to fall. But you say, well, I'm holy and I'm free and, and, and I don't just care. Now you've got to care because you've got to look at other people. You see, when you're holy, your life is regulated by the Spirit because the Spirit of God will tell you, no, but you can't do that, but you cannot wear that. You see, that's holiness. You can't do that because it's, just, it's not just about you. It's also about that other person. I mean, listen to what Paul said. He said, if eating meat will cause your brother to fall, he said, stop eating it. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's how bad this thing gets. You understand? He said, if, if eating meat is going to cause your brother, he said, don't eat it for your brother's sake. Have we got into that level that we do things for other people's sake? No, we do things for our sake. But that's still selfish. You can be righteous for your sake. That's, that's first day. That's still 30 fold. When you're living your life because of others. So that others can, can, can see Christ in you. And, 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 and be glorified. Amen. Then God is saying you're coming to maturity. So we've got to begin to understand friends. This concept of life that God is calling us. That our father is calling. Be holy because I the Lord I am holy. I have called you. I have set you apart. Amen. From other nations. This is the scripture. So I'm rounding up this morning. And I, and I hope and I pray that we understand this divine order. Because that's what we're trying to do. I'm trying to bring us to you know, th this understanding that we're not living our life anyhow. You know, and, and, and sin is still you know, crippling and, and, and hindering us from advancing to the things of God. But we have come to a day where we have surrendered all. They say we've left all. They say we've left all to follow you. We have left all. We have left all. Jesus said, no one leaves, amen, father, mother, amen, and brother, and sister for my sake that will not receive a reward. It's a reward, amen, for serving him. So we're not just doing this because, oh, well, yes, we just do it. But guess what? Even if there's no reward, it's worthwhile. It's worthwhile. I mean, what can we give in exchange for what Christ did for us? But it all begins with coming to that position. You see, all that I've said can, can just become legalistic. 
if you don't have a passion, if you have not come to see what I'm saying, that this comes through love, this comes through a desire for God. This is not something somebody is going to force on you. No, you see, all that I've said, I cannot force it on you. I cannot force it on you. No, there is no place in the scripture that demands that we force truth on people. No, you have to see it for yourself. You have to be able to see it from yourself and say, okay, this, this, this makes sense. I want to go all the way. You see, like I said, this is not for, you know, in, immature Christians. No, this is for somebody who wants to really grow. You have a love. You have a passion. You have a hunger for God. My soul longs and thirsts after you. Uh -huh. Then you begin to walk on this path. Or else your life, your spirituality will be benchmarked by the same thing you see around. Can't you see? That thing is dying. That thing has no more power again. That thing has lost its power. God is already gathering himself a remnant. God is looking for a new generation that he can use to birth his counsel and his desire. And God is connecting them from different parts of the world. Yes, that's the new day we live in. A day of divine connection. A day of divine connection. Where amen, how you define your spirituality, amen, your Christianity has become old stale bread. That thing, has, that thing is being removed right now from the temple of God. It's a stale bread. You say, remove it. We want something fresh. God is bringing something new. Because the world out there today, are, they, are, they are bent on destroying the things of God. But God is raising for himself an army. I'm sure you've heard that before. God is raising himself an army. Well, I just showed you how God trains his army. Many are called. Few will be selected. Few will be chosen. Those few are the ones that pass the test. Yes. It's scriptural. You have to be approved of God. We have to be approved of God. Not by works. But by our love, our approval is how far we can love God. And it's the love of God that compels us to embrace the process of the dealings of God. You see, it is the love that we have for him that allows us to say, okay, if this is what the Father wants, I plunge myself there. I give myself to it. And then you live your life from that order, amen, of right standing. And anything, amen, that defines, you know, iniquity and, 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 you know, and dysfunctionality and disobedience, you stand against and say, no, sorry, not here. We here are living for the Lord. We want to see the kingdom of God come. We want to see his kingdom manifest in our life. I mean, you look at all the things that is going to be happening next year in, in, in this nation regarding the school. Those not, naughty curriculum they're going to be introducing. Where was the church when these things, amen, have been passed? When this thing, amen, went through legislation to the point where, you know, they, they, they've passed it. Where Now people are crying out. People are screaming. Why, why is it that we always wake up at the end to want to now challenge? Where, 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 where was the church? We're all in this ungodly sexual perversion. You know, you, know, you remember, Sister Dione, I gave you, I showed you guys th that, that video. In fact, I allow you guys to go watch that. That's the same law now that they'll be passing in South Africa. I've been tracking this thing two years ago. I've been tracking this thing, praying against this thing. Now, that law is here in South Africa. They began it from America. That's why I say whatever they pass in America, it always finds its way down to South Africa and is destroying it's going to be destroying the life of your... I mean, already this is a nation that is already captured by sexual perversion. This is a nation that is already captured by sexual perversion. Now you bring that law again to, to children. What are, we, what are we talking about? Where, where, where are we going to start from? May the Lord help us. May we rise up in prayer. You see, we cannot pray this kind of, we cannot come into this kind of order of life, amen, if we're not determined, if we're not ready to war a good warfare, if we're not ready to fight, if we're not ready. Remember, we fight not against flesh and blood, but there's a war that is going on that is raging in the spirit, and God needs some army, not just some civilians. You, know, you, you see, civilians, when they carry gun, I mean, you be careful, because they can just, they can just shoot anything. You see, but when a well-trained, a well-trained well army is armed, it doesn't miss. This is what the Lord is doing in our day. God is awakening a generation that will be kingdom warriors. 
that will pray effectively. They understand the ways of the Spirit. They understand the demand of God. They understand what needs to be done. They understand how to engage. They understand how, amen, how, to, how to regulate their, their life, their passion. Their passion does not control them. Amen. Amen. Their, 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 their desire does not control them. They have brought amen, their life under divine regulation, under divine order, under divine authority. They walk amen, under the authority of Christ and his kingdom. When they say go, they go. When they say come, they come. They, they know how to carry the things of God. They know how to carry the ark of God. They are not just zealous, hallelujah, and allowing that zeal without knowledge to kill them like Uza. Come on. They're living for God. And they want to glorify God. They want to honor him. So this is what we're talking about, friends. And this, these are some of the things that I'm hoping that we will continue to deal with. All right. I, I love some of the things that we've talked about this morning. Yesterday we dealt with sin. Today we have, excuse me, yesterday we dealt with spirituality. Today we, 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 we've, we've dealt with sin. Tomorrow we're going to be looking into something else, hopefully by the grace of God. I'm not sure if I'll be able to cover everything, but I've given us 20 points that I think we need to look into. We need to understand and master in order to be able to master what I call uh, an effective spiritual life. Because effective spiritual life informs effective prayer life. All right, An effective prayer life develops an effective spiritual life. It's all you know interconnected so we've got to be able to do this so thank you so much everyone this morning once again for your connection father we want to bless your name we glorify you for your word this morning once again that has illuminate our hearts and our mind thank you for the way that you have spoken that you have brought this word across to us yes it is it is it is clear it is sharp we, god is is effective and this is what we ne we need to hear yes you say many are called but few are chosen we want to be part of a company of them that have been chosen father is there any heart this morning feeling weak and tired feeling disposed feeling confused feeling i don't know what to do well that's because they've allowed their soul Yes, to take charge. It's time to tell the soul, shh, be harsh, be quiet. Bind your heart and mind to the will of God. Take your mind right now. Bring it, soak it under the influence of God's word in the name of Jesus. And allow the joy of God to begin to well up like a river once again in your spirit. Hallelujah. Let your attraction right now be refocused to the things of God and to the ways of God in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. I bind the heart and soul of those listening, watching me this morning, oh God, to your eternal pleasure for their life. I declare and proclaim that they will come into a new height where they can see what you have planned for them, that they will not settle for less, that they will not allow the enemy to lead them, oh God, into that temporal pleasure, temporal pleasure. But Lord, they will see oh god that eternal pleasure in you i thank you i honor your holy name that you continue to build for yourself a people you continue to build for yourself a people i remember you saying to me Isaiah, when you come like this and pray and do these things you are empowering the nations of god you are empowering my body you are strengthening my body and sometimes we can't see it we can't feel it but i just know that something is happening over the spiritual atmosphere of this nation of our continent and we thank you oh god for what your spirit is doing all across thank you for the awakening oh god of a heart and soul and mind of a people who want to see your will established in their life and through their life and so i pray strength and grace this morning for them lord thank you lord that we will continue to pray your word we'll continue to pray within the ambience within the authority and the influence of your word we will not give in to our own mind we will not give in to our own ways we will not give in to our own desire our own passion we refuse oh god to to be dragged away to be lured away just like the enemy leered Eve away. We refuse to be dragged away. We refuse to be deceived. You said it was a woman that was deceived. Help us not to be deceived. Help us to know that the church can be deceived. Help us not to be deceived. You say you will build your church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Father, continue to empower us. Help us, O oh God, to hear and hear with the ears of the Spirit. Help us to see, but to see with the eyes of the Spirit. Help us to understand, but to understand, O oh God, with the mind of the Spirit. Father, we honor your name. We glorify you for this brand new day. Thank you for answering our prayer. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, thank you so much, everyone, this morning for connecting. I want to thank you for your uh, 
you know, you, you're tuning in this morning. May the Lord continue to empower us together. May we continue to praise Father. May we continue to get refreshed, amen, in the presence of God and through the presence of God. Continue to pray. Continue to believe the Lord. Please talk to the Lord. Ask him if he will allow you to be a support to what we're doing. We need your support, amen. Thank you so much, everyone. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.